Good morning, this is Lynn Langett, and for all things data today, I'm going to show you a bit how a new service works from Amazon Web Services. It's called the Data Pipeline, and it's kind of similar functionally to SQL Server Integration Services. It's simpler um, in terms of the actions you can do, but of course it's, it's hosted on Amazon's infrastructure. So um, in investigating creating a simple pipeline, I noticed that you also have to have an SNS um, endpoint or a location set up for notifications. So uh, you'll need those two services as well as some type of data storage. So the data pipeline is basically an ETL process, and here's from the documentation, um, in, hosted on Amazon's cloud. And uh, you, you, you're well advised to read the documentation here. There's a couple different ways to create a pipeline. You can There's a visual designer, which I'll be demonstrating, kind of like um, the uh, SSDT for a SQL Server, where you drag icons on and associate them data and actions. And that's what this diagram is reflecting. Uh, this is designed to work right now on Amazon's cloud infrastructure. So the data sources and the types of activities are around copying and processing data either in S3, Dynamo, or um, uh, in RDS. Uh, there are a couple different other ways to interact with the service. You can uh, use a command line, and that's documented here on the documentation page, and there's also an API. So you're going to have to have these other services, so I'll show you what they are. So S3, you have to have something set up in S3 just with the buckets, and I'm, I've drilled down, and you'll have to have the specific um, URL, and here's an example URL um, from a source. So you want to copy that um, before you get started. And then you'll have to have an SNS um, endpoint. Uh, I don't know if they call it exactly that, but it's a notification uh, area. So you just want to create a topic, and then you'll have to have that uh, that address as well, which you'll get from from that screen when you create it. So uh, to work with data pipelines you want to go to the pipeline area, and I've created one already just so uh, for purposes of time because the configuration took me a little bit longer than I wanted to spend on a screencast. So you create a new pipeline, you give it a name, um, you give it a description, you say what type of series uh, scheduling you want, time series or cron, you say what kind of security roles, and we'll just use admin for this. We'll create a new pipeline, and then you have data nodes and activities. So uh, we're going to start with a data node, and uh, once you select the data node, normally obviously you're going to name it and stuff as well, it's a Dynamo, MySQL, or S3. And if you have S3, and then you have to pick a schedule, um, then if you have S3, you're going to want to add an optional field called the uh, file path. And then you're going to want to paste that information in um, that you got over from S3. So once you do that, then you're going to add an activity and this place in this case we're going to have the activity be a copy activity so uh, interesting activities here you can do copy you can do hive um, which is uh, uh, the H, uh, S, uh, hql language over hbase you can do shell commands and the most interesting one to me is the emr that's elastic map reduce which is spin up a hadoop cluster uh, and do processing over this pipeline. So we're going to actually do the copy activity and uh, when we're going to do input is going to be the uh, default data node um, and then we're going to use the default schedule and then output we're going to create a new data node um, where we're going to say where we're going to put that and then we're going to need to put the field uh, let's see where is that attribute. Again you're going to want to look in the documentation when you actually do this um, oh, it's on the data node. We're on the activity itself. And then there are a couple other fields that you have to configure. So once you're done with this, then you can see these things a little bit better. And then uh, all your, uh, your any fields that are required, if you try to save it, it's going to uh, give you a list of the, the required fields. And I did have to read through the docs. It wasn't horrible, but it took about 10-15 oh, minutes. And it will tell you what's missing, like you have to have a schedule on the data node, so on and so forth. In addition to what's here, you have some templates that are just templated pipelines that you can bring up, so you can see what they are here. Uh, export S3 to Dynamo, copy S3 to RDS, copy RDS to S3, run Hive on S3, and copy on-prem MySQL to RDS, which I thought was cool. So once you're all done, 
then uh, you're going to fixing the errors, then you're going to save the pipeline and then you can activate it based on the schedule. Again, being like a cooking show, I'm going to go back to my list of pipelines and you can see that this is the one I just made and here is one that I already made earlier that um, I've been working with. So you can see here's some of the actions that are occurring. It's the same thing, but I just went and configured um, all the various properties that are required. And if I want to view the pipeline to show it to you, there's S3 source and I click on that and I go into the data nodes. I can see S3 and there's my file path and then I go to the new destination and there's my file path. Um, the activity, the copy activity required a couple more fields. Runs on, um, on success, and output and then also you had to send some stuff on the schedule. So if I go back to my list of pipelines, you can see that if I go into view the instance details, I can see for each of the activities, um, you know, very similar to any type of ETL, you know, if it's running, how it's working, if it's working, yes or no, so on and so forth. So um, interesting set of functionality, and uh, this is from Amazon. This is the data pipeline, and this is Lynn Langett for all things data. More at lynnlangett.com. Thank you.